the Bay Area. Uh, we help a lot of, uh, you know, nonprofits and social enterprises across the world uh, and help them be outcomes driven, uh, you know, to help, help them establish a strong uh, IMM uh, processes that helps them learn continuously from their stakeholders. And uh, because obviously learning from stakeholders would mean that you are going to improve your products and services for them uh, so that you have a better impact. So that's what SOPAC does uh, through its platform called Impact Cloud and our advisory services. Uh, so welcome, Saj. Um, maybe Saj can go ahead and introduce himself and maybe talk a bit about Abelobi. Uh, what do you do at Abelobi and what does Abelobi do for fishing communities? Thanks, thanks, Madhu. Good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and, and good evening from Cape Town, everyone. Uh, my name is Serge, um, and as I was introduced, I'm the one of the co-founders and managing directors of, of Abelobi. I'm I'm looking forward to this this conversation here, uh, mainly because you know, as as Madhu said, this this is an open book session. This is an open book session of how we as a, as a social enterprise, as a tech startup, as a nonprofit organization are, are muddling through and, and really processing how we understand, how we measure, how we report um, impact and, and what is impact. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to talk to you about this. But before we kind of get into that, um, that topic, I'm gonna tell you a bit more about, about Abalobi. Um, first things first, Abelobi means um, means fisher in, in Easy Osa, and it's uh, it's one of the eleven languages here in in South Africa, and it's uh, the name that uh, that several fishers that were part and parcel or were very actively part of the original co-design of our platform. It's the name that they started giving to this to this to this tool to to to, to the technology, and it stuck. Um, Abelobi means means fisher. And, and as, a, as a social enterprise, as a, as a tech startup, as a nonprofit organization, we focus very specifically on small scale fishing. And in some countries, people refer to these fisheries as traditional fisheries, artisanal fisheries. And within South Africa and, and also more globally, we, we kind of pulled it in the, in the, in, in the small scale sector. Um, Abelobi is about three and a half years old. Um, we evolved from a research project that I was running uh, when I was still based at the University of Cape Town. And then slowly but surely, as this program took off, we decided, well, we need to stand on our own feet. We need to have a home. We need to see if this has potential to grow, to scale, to, to really embed itself within the fishing communities we work with. And we, we found it at Abalobi. What do we do? We are continuously trying to co-design um, various ICTs, information and communication technologies, uh, with the idea that if implemented correctly, and I'll unpack all of this, but if implemented correctly, these platforms, these technologies, these tools can help fishers, fisherwomen, fishermen, fishing communities do things differently differently in the way they engage, for example, with conservation organizations, with fisheries authorities around, around fisheries management, marine protected area management, um, fisheries rebuilding, um, differently in the way they engage around safety at sea and, and early warning as well as, as emergency response. And then what keeps us definitely, you know, the, the, the most busy is definitely in the way these fishers as groups engage with the market um, and potentially over time reposition, reconfigure um, their, their, their space, their voice in, in, in a supply chain. Um, so that's overall what we do. Um, we, we, we build and deploy this technology here in South Africa. And we've been growing over the last couple of years and making a lot of mistakes and lear learning along the way. But, but most importantly, in kind of in our, in our theory of change or in our user journey or in our, in our model, we see the starting point of, of any of these journeys that are unpacked, you know, the conservation, the fisheries management, the safety at sea and, and the market. We see the starting point um, where fishers are owners of data. Um, and what I mean by that is many fishers, of course, already have deep uh, local, local knowledge, local ecological knowledge, but at the same time could potentially use various data collection tools to record data in a different way, in a different kind of framework, and use that data to, um, to raise their voice, to, 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 to assert their position at the decision-making table to unlock 
opportunities in in a supply chain in a market from a from a community development point of view and, and that's our starting point that that data collection that data literacy that data ownership from there we we move into the supply chain we move into the market we move into the idea that fishers can connect directly with various market um, market market stakeholders. Think about you and I, think about chefs, think about retailers. And that's where the, the digital marketplace come, comes in. And last but not least, this, this opportunity to unlock community entrepreneurship, to unlock community development um, within a data framework allows us as fishery scientists, as, as you know, as, as, as people passionate about, about sustainable fisheries, allows us to, to co-create a vision towards sustainability and a pathway towards sustainability. How do we use all this data? How do we use this agency and this group of fishers that are, you know, are, are, are owners of, their, of, of, of the market and, and market dynamics and opportunities in the market? How do we use that to craft fisheries improvement to, to, to go on a pathway towards sustainability. And last but not least, we, we firmly see or, or, or embrace or conceptualize sustainability uh, when it's, when in its most holistic sense. You know, we're looking at the ecological dimension, the social dimension and the economic dimension. In fact, we firmly believe that if we are to achieve ecological sustainability, we need to hone in on the human dimension from the socioeconomics all the way to the governance. Thank you so much, Saj. That was that was a very very wonderful uh, introduction. Um, and um, ju just to follow up on uh, you know one of the questions that um, you know uh, we we want you to answer, uh, what are some of the outcomes that you are driving through Abelobi for let's say the fishing community and you know through the marketplace through the technology mm -hmm. for good that you're building? What are some of the outcomes that you are uh, driving towards and what are some of the challenges that you see in measuring these outcomes so that you can improve your programs for the fishing communities? Maybe you can talk us through that. Yeah. Okay. So as we as we deploy this this platform in 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 South Africa, we onboard fishers. We onboard fishers. They can download the app. They can they can register. And as they register, of course, we try and connect with them around any support they may need, any questions they may have, any training opportunities that they they would want to they would want to engage in. And and most importantly, you know, what does it mean to use an electronic logbook? What does it mean to use the, the Fisher app? What is data? Um, how can data be useful for yourself as a fisherwoman or a fisherman in your daily operations, in your daily livelihood? But also, how can some of that data at a more aggregate level give us, give you, give the stakeholder group uh, a pretty good overview of where the fishery is at? So that's the starting point. As these fishers um, engage with the concept of data collection, the value proposition of this, uh, and have a lot of questions are, are around this, um, and we build trust and we build a relationship with these same fisher fishing communities, um, the opportunity comes up to join the marketplace, um, to onboard onto the marketplace program, and that's really where we kind of double down on our on our on our on our work um, with fishing communities and think through, um, you know, how we move from fishers mainly being price takers to fishers evolving as. Um, as direct negotiators, as as price makers, sometimes in 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 a in a supply chain. We deploy our technology not with individual fishers, but, but with groups of fishers. We, we firmly believe that if we are to achieve um, sustainable fisheries, if we are to unlock community development, if we are to hold or retain a lot of the value of a, of, 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 of a fishery in the community, we need to try and, and stimulate, foster, support collective action. So we deploy this technology with a group of fishers who through a very much a learning by doing approach um, engage with, um, with, well, how do we kill fish differently? How do we catch a variety of species? How do we engage with a market? How do we connect with chefs around her or his preferences? How do we divide up um, work? Um, because of course, we're trying to support fishers to supply premium quality, fresh seafood, 
to to the market and 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 how do we manage our finances as a as a group of fishers so as you can imagine madhu as you, as you can hear me talk there are a lot of learnings here there are a lot of outcomes that we're trying to we're trying to achieve but we're also trying to measure we're trying to detect um Many of these outcomes are directly linked to the platform, the technology, um, fishers using the app, fishers posting their catch on the marketplace, fishers transacting, fishers being paid. But what we're really after is what happens next? What happens you know, when fishers have obtained or have participated in training and, and coaching and, and ongoing engagement with us? What happens with the potential economic improvement um, in what happens in the household, what happens from a kind of a, a socioeconomic um, or, or well-being point of view, what happens from a food security point of view, what happens in terms of people's perception about fishery and about challenges in their own fishery and potentially hope in the future of these fishery or, or a reorientation into where they'd like their fishery to go. So, you know, those are the kind of outcomes we're trying to achieve. Those are the type of outcomes we, we, we're trying to measure. Thank you so much, Saj. I mean, I think that, uh, that you know, helps us in segueing into uh, another area. Now that you spoke about the outcomes, uh, talk us through some of the challenges. Like, how do you, like, today measure those outcomes? How are you making sure that, okay, those outcomes are being achieved? And, uh, you know, you are able to help the fishing communities to actually experience those outcomes. Maybe talk us through some of the challenges that you have uh, in measuring okay. and making progress on that front. So, so I hope this is where it gets interesting. Um, Madhu, as you know, there are many, many challenges. Um, first and foremost, we are a young organization. Um, we, we're three and a half years old. Um, we started off, you know, by, by building this, you know, through running various various projects that had, that had their own deliverables, their own outputs, their own outcomes. And over time, as we, you know, trialed different approaches into how we engage with fishers, how we engage with the market, how we connect these to these two worlds, um, we've also fine-tuned and, 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 and updated our, our, our model. We've grown, we're now a team of about 30 people, so we spend a lot of time focusing on organizational building, organizational growth, and aligning ourselves to, to our missions in the different work streams. But um, the starting point really is, is, our, is our theory of change. How do, we, how do we articulate this, this model in a theory of change that allows for enough detail that we can also detect things in, in, in the short term and celebrate some of the outcomes in the short term. Of course, as, a, as an organization, we are, you know, we are aiming for sustainable fisheries. But aiming for sustainable fisheries is a long-term game. And um, th this, this is not a one, two, three year, five year project. These are longer term projects that, um, that, need, that need runway, that need patience, that need a lot of pieces of the puzzle um, to, 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 to unlock you know, uh, our, our vision. And so some of the challenges that, uh, that we have, and I'm gonna try and list, list a, few key, a few key ones is that, um, you know, how do we, how do we building patience and runway and a very sequential step-by-step -step process where it's as important to, to, to detect and, and measure and grow the uh, appetite for fishers to engage with our program, to engage with data, um, to become more literate around how they use the data, how they use the app, how they talk about the data uh, in their own, you know, on their boat with their crew members, in their fishery, with, you know, with their nascent organization. It's as important to focus on that than, well, what is happening in the fishery as a whole? What is happening, you know, in terms of some of the ecological indicators that we that we're trying to that you're trying to contribute to, or outcomes that we're trying to contribute to, or or the overall community development um, outcomes we're trying to contribute to? And so, balancing that out um, is really hard. Um, it's really hard because of the pressure the pressure out there in terms of, well, there is a climate emergency, there is a fishery crisis, um, funding, funding is, you know, it can be extremely competitive. And, and it very often, you know, I see many organizations chasing very lofty goals and painting very, very lofty goals. So kind of getting down to 
to to to reality almost and 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 that's you know that long runway and articulating that runway in our theory of change in our impact measurement and convincing ourselves uh, and the fishers and our funders that you know making sure that a fisher uses the app every day not just once off and making sure that a fisher has a conversation or enabling a fisher to have a conversation about the data and the dashboards the access in their in in their in in their app is is as critical as connecting with the market and obtaining a better price with the market or activating a fisheries improvement project so that's a big challenge another one madhu is 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 making a very clear difference between what um what outputs are and uh, and what outcomes are um there's no doubt that as an organization, and, and I, I, when I look around and I, I listen to other organizations or I'll read their annual reports, I think everybody's a little bit guilty to this, but we often report, report on outputs. We report on, on outputs, why? Because those are the easier ones to, to, to report on. Um, you know, the data flows more easily through your system because it's completely direct, direct it's completely linked to your operations. And very often, you know, because you've got direct control on these outputs, you know, then they can make you, you, you look good. You know, I can tell you that we've trained hundreds of people and I can put that on, on in my impact report or in our impact report. But what does that mean that we've trained so many people? And I think a, a big challenge in, 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 in the work we do, as well as, of course, how we measure the work we do and the, the, the impact we have is to look, well, those people that have received training, what's changing for them? What's changing not, you know, week after the training, but what's changing for them in, in the long term? And, and how do we even conceptualize tra training? Those are the important ones. Um, and, and measuring those and creating and collecting the right kind of data and deploying the right type of methodology and data collection process to, to, to collect data around some of these outcome indicators, that's hard. Um, that's hard for, for, for everyone. Um, and it's the same with, with, with our marketplace deployment. It's very easy for me to tell you how many millions of rands have been contributed by the market into, into, into phishing communities directly into their bank accounts because we run a traceability platform, we run all, all, all the payments. And so I can again tell you how many, you know, how many, how many rands um, fishers are getting in South Africa um, through this program. What's more difficult? What's happening? What's happening in that household? What's happening in this in this individual person's head and in, in her or his outlook on the fishery, in her or his you know appetite to reinvest in the fishery, to 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 bring in youth in the fishery, to relook perhaps the gender relationships in 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 that same fishing communities. Those are the hard ones. That, that was really wonderful, Saj. So what, what I'm really hearing is, um, instead of, you know, uh, focusing on measuring, let's say your lofty goals, start small, focus mm -hmm. on what matters, measure what matters, and then you can take it from there and, and move forward. Yeah, especially if you're in the game of sustainable fisheries. Um, you know, these are long-term objective these are long-term processes and how do you really unpack it you know in a very clear user journey and, and sequential um program and and in the meantime you know be able to pick up on on these more nuanced changes along the way and with, within abalobi we are when obviously we are eager to scale and and when we think about scaling we often think about scaling out and, and scaling up and, and and we are doing this we are working with many partners around the world that are testing that are deploying a version of our platform uh, with or in the fisheries they, they work with and, and that's one way but at the same time you know this abalobi or our nonprofit or our theory of change it's all about scaling deep. How do we make sure that we, we achieve long lasting changes? How do we make sure that the fishers and, and, and the fisherwomen and the fishermen and the fisher groups we work with, how do we make sure that you know, we, we, we dive into the, the empowerment aspect and, 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 and fishers becoming the architects of, you know, of, of this process itself? Excellent. Uh, thank you so much, Saj. Um, I mean, this is, uh, I'd like to add a point here. I mean, Saj is making an excellent point. And with our, you know, with our uh, conversations that we have with so many different organizations, we see uh, time and again that 
uh, generally, it, you know, organizations find it difficult to start, you know, small, start, you know, do it in the form of impact experiments that let them even measure the lofty goals them, they, that they may have in an incremental fashion, rather than looking at the whole thing at once. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, we've, in our experience, we've seen that taking it in the form of small chunks, chewable chunks, is, is a lot uh, more efficient way to measure uh, impact. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Saj, for, for, for highlighting that, that very, very important point. Um, okay, I mean, may, uh, you know, maybe you can talk us through, like, when did you, like, really feel that, okay, uh, you know, let's, let's seek some help uh, on this and, you know, let's continue our journey. Uh, we, you know, we would need some, some third pair of eyes that can, you know, that can fall on our theory of change, help us, you know, in, in improving this further. Like, why, why that thought process? Okay, um, well, first and foremost, you know, since our inception, we've, we've always tried to engage with, with groups, with individuals that are, um, that are, you know, have more skills or have more expertise or, 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 or have dabbed into, into, you know, monitoring and evaluation and, and impact, impact measurement and, and management. We've always tried to kind of br bring, bring that in from, from the get go. But, you know, what really, you know, where we really started thinking, Ooh, we need we need a partner in this journey, is about just under a year ago. Um, you know, within South Africa, um, we were running a deployment a marketplace where we were working with fishers and we were working with restaurants. It was a pretty simple model. Fishers supply restaurants uh, where uh, chefs have uh, via the Abalobi marketplace have access to real catch of the day. What the fishers um, have caught on a particular day using low impact fishing methods throughout the season and, and the value proposition on both sides was really strong because in a country like South Africa, those two worlds don't often connect. Um, that, was, that was our model. Now, as you all know, um, COVID hit in, you know, just, just, just under two years ago and 99% of restaurants in South Africa either closed doors or went through significant challenges. We wanted to obviously remain relevant uh, remain relevant to our stakeholders and, and, and try and retain some form of impact. As we saw, many of these fishing communities lose all their markets, not just the, the digital Abelobi marketplace. And so that forced us to, to, to pivot, to pivot over and over again and, and really rethink our model about uh, and our, our impact model. How do we how do we look beyond you know the restaurants or the gastronomy sector? How do we look at at, at mainstreaming this? How do we look at 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 making sure you know we can connect with with home consumers, whether they are in an urban area or in a more rural area? How can we potentially connect with retailers? who can play a significant role, especially when we circle back on the fisheries improvement part. And, um, and how do we not forget about food security? And I mean food security in a very direct way. How do we make sure that in a country like South Africa, um, that you know, that fish doesn't just channel to, um, to people and customers, you know, in a kind of a higher socioeconomic bracket, but how do we make sure that fishers can unlock activate their role as as providers of um, of really good quality protein in their fishing communities or other neighboring fishing communities so long story short our model really changed uh, our model really kind of became much more layered um, many many more many more dimensions same in the fishing communities where we started diving much deeper into the role of fisherwomen in this in this whole program so, so that combined with um, many expansions of interests out from outside of South Africa to, to utilize our, our technology and try this out and see if there was a, a, an opportunity there or a value proposition, if fishers would be interested in, in something similar. Um, th those two things made us made us realize that ooh, <laughs> we need professional help. We need to set up. We need to think about a, a framework and impact measurement and, and, and management framework that can scale alongside 
ourselves. And and as a as a nonprofit, we were just deploying our own technology. So we had, you know, our platform bit, we had a spreadsheet for this and another tool for that and some data sitting here and another piece of data sitting there. And we realized that as we, you know, potentially deploy this, this more complex model in South Africa, as well as, you know, see how other countries, how other partners, how other groups deploy their version of, of Abelobi, you know, how do we still measure impact? How do we really detect what is going on and, and what is the difference between a fisher in South Africa taking on um, this technology or a fisher uh, group in Peru or, or Ireland? I'm looking at attendees and I see Shemas is here. So how does, how, how does that work? Um, and how do we package this in a particular way? How do we embed it in our offering um, so that we can really see where this can go? So again, that is why we decided, hey, <laughs> let's see, you know, we've heard about, about SOPACT, we've heard about their work. Um, if you haven't and you're on this call, have a look at their YouTube channel. There's some pretty impressive talks there that, uh, that really crystallized our thinking. And, uh, and that's why we knocked on your door, Madhu. Thank you so much, Saj. Uh, I think um, just, just to add to that, um, you know, for, for everyone on the call, um, so we are partnering with Abelobi. We are, you know, uh, it's it's really a, a partnership in progress where we are working together on how to solve some of these biggest challenges that you know Sarge just mentioned uh, on the call, both in terms of framework and technology, uh, because uh, generally impact measurement uh, goes, you know, it, it is a combination of both framework plus technology. Without technology, it's very very hard. Uh, to sort of implement a very, very robust uh, impact measurement and management process. Because uh, we believe like at SOPAC, we believe that IMM process is something that should help you learn from your stakeholders on a continuous basis. It's never one snapshot at a time, or it's it's never like once in a year kind of a kind of a work that you would do. It is something that you would do on a continuous basis, uh, something that we are, we have partnered with Abelobi to help them do that. And even we are, you know, learning along the way improving technology, improving automation, because uh, that's where a lot of efficiency comes in when you automate a lot of these uh, technological challenges, which makes the whole process of IMM and running those uh, smaller, nimbler impact experiments, uh, you know, seamlessly, uh, you know, executing those experiments so that you are able to learn on a continuous basis. Uh, thank you so much, Saj, for, for enlightening us on that. Uh, maybe you can you can talk us through uh, some of your vision for IMM. Maybe some of the next steps, uh, both in terms of framework as well as technology. How you see IMM playing a role in Abelobi's success? Uh, maybe you can elaborate a little on that. Okay, let me try. Um, so first and foremost, um, let me give you a little bit of a picture of of how we approach this. So we. We, we have our, our theory of change, um, and that's a living document that changes and gets reevaluated um, regularly, um, sometimes you know, weekly, uh, at least at a mi micro level. Um, and then, and then you know, that theory of change you know, breaks things up into obviously our activities, our outputs, uh, our, our more short term outcomes, and our longer term outcomes. We've spent together with SOPACT um, considerable time really articulating what are the indicators? What are the indicators that link to all these different components? Uh, what are meaningful indicators? Um, what are realistic indicators? What are indicators you know, that we can actually measure? Um, about half of them are relatively straightforward. They link directly with, uh, with our platform and the way people use the apps and the marketplace, et cetera. The other half of them are these more complex ones, these more, more difficult ones. And so again, how do we really articulate them? How do we unpack them? How do we deconstruct them? How do we how do we bring them closer to 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 the fishery and and the dynamics in 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 the fishery and 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 and, and our fishers engage with with this program and and want to raise obviously their 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 learnings along along the way. So so we've done that. Um, 
as an organization, we felt quite strongly that even though we are partnering with Serpact, we need to make sure that um, impact measurement is firmly embedded in, in everything we do in all the different work streams. And that's easier said than done. Um, we have definitely been quite guilty to making this somebody else's problem and outsourcing this to an m and &E, um, company, very often a consultant's company, uh, and hoping you know that they would detect and and make us look good. Um, I, that's something that you know I, I see many organizations do, and we've learned a lot from that. But and but the most important thing that we've learned from that is that you can't outsource this. It's impossible. Um, you know there might be certain aspects, and I do firmly believe in the idea of external evaluation and the idea of auditing your impacts. Absolutely. But from a kind of a, a data collection point of view, from a from a, a deploying a particular process that allows us to carefully listen to our stakeholders, that's something you you. You, you have to own. Um, and that's something we've learned along the way with, with the SERPAC team. And so that's what we do now. We, 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 we have a team around this. We have key, 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 key team members that focus on this, you know, as part of their job. And at the same time, we've really tried each work stream in Abelobi. So think about the marketplace, community development and training, um, our international work, the marketplace. We've really tried to make them live the indicators really engage with the indicators on a, on a, on an almost daily daily weekly basis in the way they 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 report in the way they think about about their activities they think about about outcomes and and what's helped for us is aligning a lot of our theory of change elements from outcome to indicators with um, our project management tools and, and using objective key results, OKRs in the organization and making sure those two talk very closely to one another. And then we were deploying technology thinking that, hey, we can tell a story with you know what comes out of this these apps that we that we run with fishers with 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 with, with the market and, and very quickly realized that there's a whole bunch of there's a whole dimension that doesn't flow through the app that you know that that needs to be that needs to be needs to be collected or needs to be detected through 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 focus groups through 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 surveys um, and surveys that are not once off but but surveys you know that happen on an ongoing basis so that's a big body of work that that is now you know unfolding uh, within within Abelobi and 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 we need to bring that together how do we make sure that you know uh, indicators or or um, or responses from from a survey from a particular individual within a particular community at a particular time in their journey of fish from using the Fisher app to the marketplace how do we make sure that we can query this against their usage in the app or or their position in in the marketplace or or, or the revenue or, or their role within within the marketplace or how they engage with the training or how they onboard other fishers along along the process so building this kind of three-dimensional model where you know there's app data which is all about the fishery and the traceability and the economics combines with 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 survey data that dives much deeper into perceptions attitudes, um, proxies around food security, proxies around well-being. That's that's what we, we, we're trying to really puzzle together now and, and frame in such a way that it's 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 scalable. Um, it's scalable the, not just for ourselves here in South Africa, but it's a package that um, that partners that we work with can 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 piggyback on, can can utilize and adapt for sure, but 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 deploy in, in their in their own in their own engagement with with the fishers, and most importantly, of course, um, how do we how do we ensure that uh, that data is or the, that information doesn't remain information for Abelobi staff or our funders or or our partners overseas, but that information is fed back directly to the fishers we work with and who are partners in this co-design process. Thanks a lot, Saj. And uh, I'd like to add a couple of points here from, from a technology standpoint, what uh, Saj was explaining, which is you know all of this data coming from different sources, such as surveys and app usage, uh, they have their you know training modules that they do on, on the fishers that fishers go through, uh, there's data being collected there. 
So all of that data is, it, it's a very complex undertaking to actually bring in all of the data together in order to learn uh, from that data. As in as Surge was, you know, clearly explaining, you know, you need to be able to correlate data from, let's say, the learning modules that they are doing for the fishers, uh, the app usage that the fishers are doing, and then correlate it with the survey data that they are collecting on, let's say, some of these outcomes that they are trying to understand, for example, food security. So all of that needs to be pulled in, and you need to be able to extract, uh, you know, information or, or insights from that, uh, and you know, learn from that. So it, it's a it's a pretty complex undertaking, and this is this is the part of work that uh, you know SOPAC and Apple OV we are doing together uh, in order to make this more efficient, in order to make this more continuous, more nimble, uh, and so that you know a lot of efficiencies can come in in terms of technology with, that helps you learn from the data efficiently. Uh, thanks a lot, Saj, for for enlightening us on all of these uh, different processes about Apple OV, what Apple OV is doing. Uh, I, I don't know if we have, uh, we, we want to leave sufficient time for people to ask any questions. I know there are a lot of organizations that uh, especially work in, uh, in the phishing uh, domain. I, I saw a few messages here that they are actually working on that. Um, maybe we can get started on Q&A, Lorena, if we have any questions uh, uh, for Sarge or for, you know, for SOPAC in general, we can, we can, take, them, we can take them up now. Yes, hi everyone. Okay, um, yeah, so we have multiple very interesting questions. Um, Oscar Espinosa was asking uh, how you keep track of all these different impact variables. And I think you just described now uh, what are the uh, challenges behind it and, and how you try to um, bring different data together to be able to track that. But uh, there's one piece of the question that I find very interesting, which is how do you speak about impact in the meantime while you are uh, trying to figure out all these pieces? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not 100% sure I've got a good answer to this. Um, I think we, we, we're trying to speak about short-term outcomes. We're trying to think, to be trying to engage the public who that is watching our program. We're trying to engage the, the funders that are supporting us and the fishers we work with, of course. We're trying to really focus on this is where we are in our, in our theory of change in, in this user journey. This is already a significant milestone. And, 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 and this is, you know, this is key. And this is our foundation to then move towards, as Madhu said earlier on, the more, the more lofty goals. So, so talking about, about outcomes, short-term outcomes is, is, is critical. Um, while, you know, you're building up towards some of the, the impact indicators that are more directly linked with, um, with sustainability. And uh, just to add to that, um, uh, and Saj is absolutely right. I think all of these smaller uh, short-term outcomes that we try and measure, I think they add up to actually inform you on your bigger goals. Obviously they, they need to uh, speak to the bigger objectives that you have in an incremental fashion. But you have to start small, you have to start somewhere, and that is those short-term outcomes that you try to measure. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's a very, very uh, good start point and a very good point for every organization to actually follow. Lorna, back to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I see another question that is also kind of related. Uh, Laura, where you pasted in the, in the Q&A, I can just ask. It says, do you have any controls in place to ensure that what the fishers are telling you is what re is really happening in their lives? Um, so she's talking about intangible indicators such as self-confidence or resilience, adaptive capacity. Um, so I think either of you can respond since uh, it, yeah. we're pretty much in that process of survey. So so, so that's a good question, Laura. Uh, there's no doubt that um, depending on who's asking the question, depending on the circumstances, depending on the audience, you know, that a, a different story may, may, may emerge. When, when it comes to, and I'm reading your, your comment here, but when it comes to adaptive capacity or resilience, I honestly think that Abelobi cannot make any claims that um, 
we, you know, we've really built at scale or at a particular scale or with long-term effects at adaptive capacity and resilience. I think we, we really at, at early stages. Um, some fishers may disagree with that. Some of my, my colleagues may, may disagree with that because we, we also try to celebrate some wins. And we've seen our fishers that are willing to the program were able to adapt more easily throughout this pandemic than fishers who not necessarily linked to this program. But those are short-term gains. Those are short-term effects. I'm, I'm not 100% sure yet if that will translate in a kind of a, a more longer-term resilience. When it comes to self-confidence, um, you know, there's obviously the methodology of, of data collection. Um, who does a survey? How is the survey? How is the survey done? How is the question asked? Um, how is the question framed? Um, and then and then looking at a, a range of proxies and then querying across our, our, our data, not just focusing on one response from this particular individual through the survey at that point in time, but also looking at it in combination to the responses or, or behavior from that same individual in a meeting with other fishers, in a meeting with, mar with marketers uh, on how they use the app, on what features do they use within the app? Uh, how do they engage with, for example, the analytics? What role uh, do they start playing in, in the fishery and in this deployment of, of the marketplace? I think I, I couldn't have answered that better. Uh, and just to yeah, just to add to what Sad said, he made a very very important point, which is observing uh, the stakeholder. Of course, uh, there's a lot of direct data collection. There are a set of questions that you would ask them, but it goes further than that. It's like beyond those questions. Like, what kind of observations can you make on your stakeholders? What can you document? I think that that becomes extremely important for you to understand these uh, surrounding, uh, you know, it, it, the, what we call as, you know, surrounding impact that happens on the stakeholders in terms of, let's say, self-confidence, improving self-confidence of, of fishers. So observation is, is extremely, extremely important uh, for impact measurement. Back to you, Lorena. Thank you. Um, Dominique is asking if uh, the Avalobis impact measurement is aligned to any globally recognized framework or if we're using mostly custom indicators? Hmm, good question. Um, I think overall, many of our um, long-term impact indicators and, and, and are very much aligned with um, various sustainable development goals. Um, but within Abelobi, we focus heavily on the United Nations, the FAO Small Scale Fisheries Guidelines. Um, if you read the fisheries world, I'm sure you, you've heard about that. And, and how do we kind of really frame our, our indicators and our contribution um, um, along, along, along the, the, those tools, along those, those, those instruments? At the same time, um, there are many indicators that are, are, are very specific to the fisheries we work with. And also there are many indicators that are very important for the fishers we, we work with. And um, right at the beginning, I, I spoke about, about co-design and how within Abelobi, we really try as best as we can to co-design not only the technology, but also the program with the fishers um, that are part and parcel of this, this, this initiative. And it, it's almost the same with the we know with, with what are we trying to achieve and how do we measure what, what we're trying to achieve and what is important for fishers that we are able to detect through the data collection at a more aggregate level or a group level and how do we report that to the same fishers. So I would say a, a, a good mix. Um, I think we probably start with very context specific, you know, our own custom indicators. And then over time, as we learn more about these indicators and what they mean and how do we interpret that data, we try where relevant, where possible to connect them with um, more standardized metrics. Um, it's a little bit easier from an ecological point of view than from a human dimension point of view, for sure. Thank you so much, Saj. Uh, Lorena, do we have uh, more questions in the Q&A? Yeah, answer? there's there's one uh, that is kind of related. Um, 
it, it's still about measurement. It says from Kim, is there room for other influences over outcomes, attribution, and unintended consequences in your measurement, or is it still too early to look at that? No, that's that's the important part. How do we make sure that we don't report on things that we maybe just made a small contribution to, or or were, you know, or, or were not directly you know, or wasn't directly related to the activity, the, the 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 program that we run. I think that that's always the hard part. Um, in some of the projects that we run, um, and and with some of our partners, we try and 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 bring in the idea of a control group, uh, not a control group that's never going to get the opportunity to also try this out and pilot this in their fishery, but maybe a control group that doesn't start there, maybe in the first year, uh, that allows us, or we're hoping that that will allow us to better detect um, what our contribution is to change in in this fishery. And, and again, um, you know, bringing, bringing the indicators closer to home. I, I think that's, that's probably the, one of the biggest lessons for, for Abba Lerby of the last couple of years is how do we make sure these indicators are, 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 are not that high level, are, are not too ambitious almost, um, but really bring it very close to, well, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing with these fishers? Uh, what are we doing directly with these fishing groups? Um, what, is, what is really linked that we know is very clearly linked to 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 the program? Um, I think that that's that it's it's a hard one. Um, and then of course, unintended consequences is is uh, <laughs> the answer there is I suppose being being a bit bold and being a bit more honest. Um, um, there are unintended consequences. Um, think about you know this Abalobi program. Not every fisher joins on day one within a particular community. There are early adopters, and and those early adopters, um, while we want to celebrate them, at the same time, you know, they they could be very easily. There could be a process where um, power dynamics change or new power dynamics uh, emerge, and and really being able to detect that and have a conversation about this and weave that in into our our our, our program is is absolutely critical. It's the same with you know with you know food security versus economic revenue through the marketplace. How do we make sure that we build in the type of data collection processes, which could be quantitative and qualitative or both? But how do we make sure that we build in such a process that we we are able to detect at a high resolution that um, not all the fish is leaving that fishing community? That not all the fish, fish is going to a gastronomic sector in a, in an urban metropole like, like like or in a metropole like Cape Town. But how do we make sure that from a model, but also from a kind of impact measurement point of view, we pick up how, for example, fishers who are now suddenly earning more are able to keep fish for for for. For, for for food security needs for barter in their community how do we how do we detect that um, they certainly don't lock that on their fisher app so how do we how do we pick that up and um, related to that there's a question from Paul uh, he's asking to what extent do the fishers determine the impact indicators and I mean they necessarily don't do that directly but how do you uh, let's say involve them? involve the fishers mm. or yeah. the community. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll, I'll focus for this answer, I'll focus more on, on, on our app. Um, the Fisher app is a, is a mix of key data elements that come from you know, our understanding of fisheries and the kind of data that we should collect, collect from best practice point of view to really try and tease out and understand you know, what is going on in this fishery. Um, so the key data elements that you know we can we can connect or we can um, we we can engage with at, at a very much at a, at a global level um, from a reporting from a kind of an electronic catch reporting point of view, but at the same time there are also many elements within the Fisher app, uh, definitely the South African version, that um, these are things fishers want to collect. They have nothing to do with a fisheries improvement project necessarily or um, 
you know, standard global indicators around, you know, the ecological health of a fishery, but they've got everything to do with where this fishery is at or this fisher group is at and, and, and what they want to collect and what they want to collect individually, but what also they want to collect at a, at a group level. And so that is an example of indicators of data elements that are, are, are really driven by the fishers themselves. Perfect. Thank you. And finally, um, last question. I, I see that a couple of people are asking about partnerships uh, mm. with Ava Lobby. We have one person from a university and also someone who's asking about a joint venture in Jamaica. Um, and we know that you work with some partners. So can you just talk a little bit more about what kind of partnerships do you yeah. yeah. Okay. So let me let me try and unpack that briefly. But first and foremost, if you're interested in learning more in having a full tech demo, please reach out to us um, via our website. Um, there's a, a little form there, expression of interest. It's not long, uh, but it does help us to prepare a bit for our first talk or our first conversation with you. So you know, via our website, you 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 can reach out to us and we can we can explore this a bit further. But I think what I really want to say is um, where we at as a program. Um, you know, we, we have some proof points in South Africa. We, we, we've achieved certain outcomes in South Africa. We're trying to grow this, this program and really kind of navigate the walk through our theory of change here, here in South Africa. But, but um, we're very much in, in a learning um, phase when it comes to what does it all look like internationally. And so where, where we're at now is that we are partnering with um, producer organizations, fisher cooperatives, NGOs working very closely with fishers uh, on site, and, and we're partnering with them to see what elements or what configuration uh, would be interesting to test in, in, their, in, in their environment. So when you engage with Abelobi, you, you don't come on our website and put in your name and, and your credit card and then switch on a couple of things um, and then you know you're good to go. This is all about the model. Um, this is all about a technology uh, and a traceability platform um, that is Fisher first. And so what does that mean? It means that we want to get to know you. We want to get to know how you work if you're not a fisher or a fisher group, we want to get to know how you work with fisher groups and, and what you know the ingredients or, or what the relationship look like, what are some of the objectives you want to achieve and how we can then partner with you um, to sprinkle a little bit of Abelobi technology in the work you're already doing. Great response, thank you. <laughs> so um, yeah, we're almost, coming to the end, we still have a couple of more questions, but uh, people can reach out to, to you or to Sopak for more questions. Um, we don't want to keep anyone else, anyone uh, in this call for over the time. So uh, yeah, I think from my side, thanks everyone from, for joining and I'll give it to Madhu and Serge to uh, close. Yeah, I mean, uh, thank you so much uh, everyone for making the time and uh really uh, listening to what Serge has to say. Uh, Serge, I mean, any final comments, any tips to some of the organizations that, you know, that may want to, you know, get started mm -hmm. on IMM? Uh, what would you suggest? How would you, how would you, how would you suggest them they start? Well, I, 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 my one tip is that this field is ever evolving. Um, there are a lot of there's a lot of new thinking out there at the moment, um, which is fascinating, but sometimes also daunting. Um, so making sure that you, you you read about it, that you you're engaged with it, and and that that you you look at it right from the onset, that would be my, my recommendation. You know, we, we are three years in, and I mean, obviously, if we knew what we what we knew now, I would definitely, or we would have definitely done a couple of things differently. Um, and the key one here is, is weave this in your organization from, from the get-go. Um, and sure, you know, you might want to summarize 10 key indicators for your for your for your for your impact reports to your to your funders, but at the same time, you know you want to be able to dive a little bit deeper um, into the complexity of your program, your activities, your 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 outputs, your your outcomes, and 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 that requires very often multiple data sets, um, and bringing those multiple data sets together, don't leave it to the end. <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Saj, and thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining in today. Uh, we, I think, have a have a, another interesting webinar coming up. We will notify everyone shortly of that. Uh, thanks a lot, and thank you so much, Saj. Thank you so much for making the time. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you.